Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Choice to turn away 
yes. from the things that you've been doing. Yes, yes. That is a conscientious thing that you make up in your mind That's it. that you choose to do. But when deliverance comes in, yes. deliverance comes only from the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Talk to me, and, and, and I want you to understand because see, this song, this song takes place when David is going through some of the most trying times of his life. And I understand that we're in a place right now where some of us are going through the most trials times in our lives. We face things that we just don't understand why. Seems like every time I get over one hurdle, something else keeps coming about. And I'm trying to live right, and I'm trying to do right, but every time I turn around, something is going on. Seems like the more I try to do good, the more hell breaks loose in my life. And I just don't seem to understand what David makes it plainly right here. He said, the righteous cry. But the Lord will help. Can I get a witness? Amen. See, it's something about now. Listen, listen, listen. Everybody in here got to shed some tears sometime. Everybody in here go through something that gets you so emotional that you just can't contain yourself and you can't defend yourself and you can find in loved ones and friends that you talk to. But when you cry unto the Lord, it's a difference when you cry out to the Lord. And I want to set the record straight because some people think that people in church got it easy and everything is great and everything is going on. I want, to, I want to get that whole story out of the church because the people that are trying to do right and live right is the one catching the most hell. See, I want to say, I'm going to make it plain to you because, see, we live in a day and time we need a word of truth. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to preach the truth. Amen. I don't know what nobody else preaching, but I'm going to preach the truth. Thank you, Lord. If your life is on easy street uh-huh. and everything going smooth, the devil got you right where he wants you. He ain't got no reason to break hell loose in your life. You ain't praising God. You ain't thinking about God. You focus on, well, I got it made. Everything good. I ain't going through nothing. Everything good. But the moment you start thinking about doing the right thing, watch how fast them tables begin to turn. Can I get a witness again? I said this one before, the devil ain't after you, it's because he already got you. Amen. 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 Some people say, what you talking about? I said, now, if everything in your life going so good, and you know you ain't stepped foot in the house of the Lord, and you wouldn't have nothing without the Lord, who you think giving you what you got? You got everything that you need. You ain't prayed a day in your life. You ain't been sick a day in your life. Who you think making all these things happen? The devil got power just like the Lord. Can I get a witness in here? And he'll keep you in a comfortable place. He'll keep you making like everything look good. He'll keep you because he don't want you to find out that there's a savior. And see what he does. He brings about problem after problem. Yes. To try to get you to say, now wait a minute. Tell it, tell it. When I was not even dealing with this God and Jesus thing, right. I ain't had none of these problems. Right. I ain't had nothing to worry about. Right. Now that I'm listening to these so-called preachers and people that's in the church, right. now I got hell breaking loose on every leading side. Right. But the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Can I get a witness in here? But I thank God that we got a righteous judge. See, we can't allow the troubles of this earth to confuse us of what we're here for. We're only pilgrims passing through a stranger's land trying to find our way back home. And I don't know about you, but if I got to go through a little stuff down here on this earth, 
But understand when I get home, I ain't got to worry about none of these problems no more. When I get home, I ain't got to worry about the trouble in this life no more. But I gotta live a life down here that can secure my spot. Oh, yeah, talk to me again. In the midst of trials and tribulations, I like the way David said in the beginning, the first verse, he said, I will bless the Lord at all <laughs> times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. See, some of you got to understand in the midst of your problems, all you got to do is give him a praise. In the midst of your circumstances, all you got to do is give him a praise. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the devil threw at you. I don't care what you're trying to face. All you got to do is say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And no matter what it looked like or what it seemed like, his praises will continually be in my mouth. See, if you praising him, then you ain't got no time for no pity party. If you praising him, you ain't got no time to speak nothing out your mouth that ain't supposed to come out your mouth. Because the Bible tells us that life lies within the power of your tongue. So if you praising him, if you got a put y'all ain't want to get in here. If you speak blessings, then you'll see blessings. Everybody got it twisted. That we don't deal with things. That we don't struggle with things. That we don't go through things. And some of them don't even understand how you can still be going through and have a smile on your face. Some of them don't understand how you can still be going through and still be a blessing to somebody else. Even though you don't have it, you still gave it to somebody else. That's because the joy of the Lord that's on the inside is my strength. When I'm weak, he stands mighty and strong. I will bless the Lord at all. I want you to understand, yes, we love God. And yes, we worship and praise him. And yes, we do go through but the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. All of us got some afflictions that we done been through. All of us got some afflictions that we done dealt with. Some of us got financial afflictions. Some of us got health afflictions. Some of us got family afflictions. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But here's the part you want to jump and get happy about. It. But the Lord shall deliver. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm so glad that one day the Lord delivered me. I was a wretch, undone, wasn't fit to live, wasn't ready to die. But God looked beyond my folks. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad he delivered. I just want to tell you, the Lord said, be not dismayed, whatever be time. God will take care of you. How many know he'll take care of you? How many know he'll take care of you? There's a difference between repentance and deliverance. And I thank God for delivering me. When my foes thought he had me, when the devil thought he had me, when everybody thought that I wouldn't be what the God called me to be, God reached way down and delivered me. And he raised me up. And he placed me on a rock to stay. Is there anybody in here that got that testimony? Said I was sinking in a world of sin. 
But Jesus went to Amen. And he delivered me. Place me on a rock to stay. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what you're going through. God said he'll deliver you out of all of your troubles. Keep holding on. Keep fighting. Keep struggling. Keep pushing. He said, I press towards the mark of the high calling. Can I get a witness in here? Do I have anybody in here that I just keep pressing your way? They get hard sometimes, but I'm going to keep pressing my way. People keep talking about me, but I'm going to keep pressing my way. Church might not be acting right, but I'm going to keep pressing my way. Because one day, God said, He delivered me from all. Word said he's a man that shall not lie. His word always be true. He said in his word, I will hear you and I will deliver you from all of your troubles in the midst of your circumstances. Just remember Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. Is there anybody in here that can say I can bless the Lord? Regardless of my circumstance. Regardless of what I'm going through. Regardless of what it looked like. Regardless of what the doctor said. Regardless of what friends and family may say. I will bless. I will bless. I will bless. I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for delivering me. Is that anybody's testimony here today? And I want to let you know, even if you're still with God, there may still be some things that you will be delivered from. Just keep on praying. Just keep on praising. Don't let your affliction stop you from praising. Don't let the affliction be bigger than the but God. I'm talking to somebody here. See, a lot of times when we get in the circumstances, the devil begin to play tricks with our mind and make us think that the situation is bigger than that. But you serve a God that's bigger than everything. Don't let your affliction stop you from coming to the house. Don't worry about what they're going to say. You get your life in order. And you keep praying. Because God said he'll deliver you from all, 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 somebody need to say that, all, all, all of my troubles, all of my troubles. So you know what you can do in this moment? I just want you to put your hand up and wave your hand like this. Tell your troubles bye-bye. Tell your troubles bye-bye. Tell your troubles bye-bye. And the reason you can tell your troubles by God is because you serve a God that said he'll deliver you out of all of your troubles. He'll deliver you out of everything that you're facing. Tell all your troubles by God. Tell them by God. Tell them by God.
Thank you. 